Good morning, this is Mel with 5 Star PWC. We are going to be taking a look at this 701 crankshaft here. It should be a popular one for the guys who are into, you know, working on their super jets or, you know, small Yamaha jet skis. This one uh, is out of a super jet and the guy said, you know, his engine was locked up. So when we took it apart, you know, we found that this bearing was bad because it, you know, it's pretty common for those skis to get some water in it and got on that bearing, but the front one seems fine. Front bearing is fine and the rods look okay so far, but this bearing is seized up. We're gonna be taking it apart today and, and see if we can do a repair on this one for them. It's a budget repair. Instead of doing a rebuild, we're just gonna see if we can repair it. So um, anyways, if this video is helpful to you, please like and subscribe. You know, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and to like, you know, if the video is helpful for you and it saves you some time and money, you know, I appreciate it if you could leave me a like on it. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. And uh, we will be putting out uh, many more videos in the future. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope this uh, helps. So we're gonna start today by just uh, uh, taking off the two ends. We're gonna go ahead and take this apart using my uh, jaws here. Now the, uh, the the big the big the big end right here, which that's a really nice looking bearing. This thing had low hours on it. The big bearing right here looks really good, so I'm gonna pop it off first. Now this one usually comes off pretty easily, so I definitely recommend wearing some leather gloves when you're doing this. But uh, there's not really enough space in between here to um, get the clamp in. So you take a chisel and get in here and, and, and just kind of wedge it. Sometimes, you know, I sharpen this up quite a bit because it's so worn out, which it definitely needs. But if it's, if it's a bearing you're gonna trash, it's better just to heat it up. Heat it up first, really good with a torch going right here and then it'll move forward a lot easier. But this bearing, we're gonna to try to salvage it to just and see what we can come up with. Yeah, it's moving pretty easy. See the gap I created in that, just like that? But this is a nice crank, okay? It doesn't have very many hours on it, so the longer and older they get, the more those stick. Try heat if you're having trouble with it. This is one of the easier cranks to work on. Probably shouldn't have said that, so I don't have all kinds of trouble with it. But um, usually these Yamaha cranks are pretty sweet. These little 701s are pretty simple. Very popular crank. Back in the day, this was massively used. Take a look at this rod. It sure does feel good. Man, that pin, that pin looks friggin' brand new. I don't know how well you can see that. Got a mark on it. I'm debating whether or not I should take this side off too, but I think I'm gonna just for laughs, as it's no big deal to really true this back up. But uh, if you were at home doing this, you know, you might, if you, if this pin is good, and this is even on the rusty side, man. You can probably make an assumption that this this one is pretty nice too. But I'm just gonna go take it apart anyhow. Oh, I think it's beautiful. Yep. Very nice. Okay. So now I have a, 
a set of cases that I use to phase these. Um, but uh, you know, if you if you don't have a set of cases to phase them, um, then you can just uh, uh, you know mark this, and it works really well too. I mean, it can be off like uh, you know at least a degree. I can't remember what the manual says, but uh, degree is actually quite a bit. But if you uh, if you describe a line across there, uh, it seems to work pretty well to put it back together. We don't have to take off of both sides because this is the bad bearing. Okay, that works. Now this stuff dries really good. Fast too. Huh? Okay, here's the problem. I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace both the bearings just for laughs. You know, this one looks good. I'm definitely going to go ahead and weld weld this and just weld the whole crank back together just to make sure nothing moves. I just throw a shield up when I weld by these pins because I don't want to accidentally have a spatter go on it. These Yamahas sure do weld a lot better than the Sea Dews with. and grease these babies up. I am putting a bunch, just kind of a bunch of little dabs. So there's uh, holes drilled in right here and you want the holes to go upward like that towards the center. So that one would go like that. So that's going to be my first one on. And this is my second one on. So I'll just switch them around. 20 thousandths feeler gauge and a torch and that's all you need. Now this is a little hot, okay, and this isn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait a few minutes for this to cool down, because I want this pin cool. Uh, as it's hot, it expands at several thousandths, so, which can make this go on tight. And I obviously don't want that on tight, because if I have to move it a tiny bit, I can. And after I'm done, I'll go ahead and weld it like the other side. Let's go ahead and clean up our rods while we're waiting.
They, they look excellent condition. Reuse these babies. By the way, these are some WSM bearings. It's all China, Taiwan. I think they're okay, you know. They seem pretty good. Because when you try, the problem is trying to find this bearing is that hole right there. You either have to buy your own bearing, like say from uh, Japan or something, and then, and then drill these holes in, or you're kind of stuck buying them from like SBT or WSM, some of the suppliers. And that hole is kind of hard to drill and setting it up and everything is just a pain. So, I mean, we can do it with our bridge port, but who wants to dink around with that? A little bit of help putting it. So how we check it is when I lay the parallel across there, you can see the gap, you know, on this end and on that end. Uh, you know, this little gap right here and this little gap right here is exactly the same. If, if it was out of whack, you know, it'd be really narrow here and wider over here. So I mean, that thing is like perfect, you know. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and weld it. So I can see close up when I'm welding. It helps me to weld. I don't know about you, but I can't see as well as I used to. It's this part. So um, I'll go ahead and clean off this bearing. Yeah, very nice. So, Side of alignment. Basically what I'm doing with the torch here is I'm changing the temperature of this. It's it's really cold compared to this because I've been working on that. So I want to raise the temperature so it's at least a little bit warmer or comparable to that temperature. When you look at it like this, straight across, make sure it's like not cockeyed, you know. You start driving it down there. And lastly, I turn it like that, and I don't know if you can see that, but this side is closer to that side. So I'll put this side on the table and hit down on this. And when they hit the table, right there, it's down. So now I know they're you know both pretty close. So now I'll finish pushing it together on the press and use a 20 thousandths feeler gauge in here. It's supposed to be 15 to 20 thousand. So when you're pushing this pin in, if you put it right flat here on this surface, 
it will stop the pin before it goes up far enough because the pins always extend out a little bit. So you want to jump across these two lips right here when you're pushing down on it. Again, you want to look at it, you know, horizontally so that it's up against the pin vertically correctly. And if it is, then just come on down with it. There you go, a little bit snug right there. I get all those pins in there, right? too far. That's uh, plus six, so pretty close. A little closer. Plus three and a half. So I'm going to go a little more right here. Hit it right here. Need to put that in a vise and squish it a little bit. Let's give that a shot. Squishing that in like that pretty hard sometimes to get it to go on the pin a little bit. I uh, made it stop bouncing around like crazy. See that? It was bouncing around like really crazy. I should be able to get it. So that is uh, minus from zero, seven. Minus zero is about five and a half. So this side is a tiny bit up. Oh, there we are. There you go. It's within one thousandths, one and a half thousandths. Okay. Other side. Inch this. Have to do the same thing. It's better if it's high. You can just spread them. You know, use a chisel to spread it. Oh, we are at uh, five or six right there. Yeah, we're so that's nine o'clock and three o'clock. It was within like a half of a thousandth. So that's twelve o'clock and six o'clock. So it needs to be squished again. Anyways, I th think we might have lost some footage. My memory card got full. I put this bearing on and put a new bearing here. And so the only bearing I'm gonna reuse is this back one. Uh, it's a really, really nice bearing. So anyways, I'm gonna keep this baby. There we go. This this ring goes down. I 
gets hot real quick. Alrighty. There you have it. 1701 650 760 crankshaft rebuilt. Whatever you want to use it for. So, or re repaired, I should say. The beauty. Should run like a champ. So. <laughs> Me! I! I caught him! <laughs> yeah, dude. I did that! Look at that! Ha ha ha! <laughs> yeah, dude.